Hey guys, Jake, Jake Bag Knives. Today we're gonna go over how we do electrical anodizing on titanium. Okay, so some of the biggest questions that I, or most frequently asked questions that I get are uh, what kind of power supply? Uh, so basically any type of laboratory type power supply will work and that's a DC power supply, not AC. So <clears throat> what I've got is a Sorensen, um, you see the model number here. It's a pretty straightforward device. It's just got a big transformer in it. Um, you know, the inverter type power supplies are smaller, uh, take up less space, but this was a surplus unit. I believe it was a rack power supply for some kind of server. Uh, but basically what you're after is high voltage and good amperage. So 20 amps is a lot. Uh, 200 volts is a lot. Uh, but I wanted one power supply that would pretty much do everything that I wanted it to do, and including doing some anodizing with aluminum. So, you know, I got uh, this, even though uh, 20 amps is fairly minimal when it comes to uh, aluminum anodizing, but I haven't gotten to that point in life, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, so, yeah, basically, you have this uh, 220 uh, volts. Uh, AC power supply so plug that into my shop power and then it outputs out of uh, a positive and negative DC you adjust your voltage uh, coarse voltage and your fine voltage so basically like single volts you know one two three four five and then fine voltage is going to give you like 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 volts stuff like that so that really helps you fine-tune the coloring uh, because different types of titanium will anodize at different voltages so if you have like grade 38 which is a really common knife titanium and grade 5 they actually use just slightly different voltages to get specific colors so you really got to watch that uh, your amperage usually I just keep this cranked all the way up um, the amperage draw is going to be based on the size of the part um, so you have anode cathode um, so let's move up so power supply there uh, move up to my uh, electrolyte tank. So basically, I've just got my lovely drawing here. Uh, TSP is my electrolyte. So basically, put about four or five gallons of water in here, and then I mix in about a cup of trisodium phosphate um, box up here in my cabinet. TSP. It's getting harder and harder to find, um, so you know, look carefully at that. There's other things that you you can use, but I found TSP works pretty well. Um, you can see sometimes when you get into the solution, it'll after a while of not using it, some of it will settle out of solution. So occasionally you want to mix it, um, and that'll help you, uh, you know, expedite your anodizing. Typically, you'll know that your anodizing is not working super great. Um, you'll put your part in and it'll just take forever to change colors usually just means that you need more trisodium phosphate or you just need to clean out the tank and start from scratch um, so hopefully I get the terminology right here because you know typically as a mechanic I'm used to positive and negative but you have anode and cathode I believe cathode is the negative Forget about my color scheme here. I basically just have these wire netted on because I move them between tanks for the blackening uh, tank and the regular anodizing tank. The nice part is, is if you mess it up and you get them swapped, uh, it just won't anodize. So it's no big deal. If it doesn't anodize, swap the leads and you're good to go. Um, basically my cathode, if I got that right, uh, is behind this protective um, barrier so that I don't arc out on it. And it's just a big copper plate I'm gonna see that down in there. It gets a little grimy every once in a while. I gotta pull it out and hit it on the wire wheel just to clean it up. Uh, and then I've got just a piece of 17.4 that I had uh, stainless steel for the anode bar, and I just connect it to the outside here. And that's pretty straightforward. There's not a lot to that. You just keep it full. Um, you know, this is just some polycarbonate that we glued together with polycarbonate glue and made a little fish tank basically uh, you see I've got some cracks that they don't leak yet uh, but eventually I'm probably gonna need to replace this tank um, yeah so that covers basically the anode cathode tank the electrolyte tank and then the other uh, very critical thing that you need is some titanium wire 
Uh, so basically you can go on to wherever eBay seems to work pretty well and get yourself some uh, 1 16th um, Grade 5 titanium wire. It's not super cheap, but it'll last you forever because you'll get a bin of it uh, So basically I just bend up these handy little hooks and you can see Occasionally I need to go through and clean them because they get kind of gunky but the basic premise is, is that you uh, can dip it in there Hang it on there with your part on the end of it, and it will anodize your parts. Sometimes what you need to do if you're not getting a good connection is just wet the top of the connection, give it a wiggle. Kind of like with jumper cables when you're jumping a car. Um, you know, and make sure you're washing your hands or wearing gloves when you're using this stuff. Trisodium phosphate is not, not really bad on an MSDS sheet, but still not something I would want to drink or keep on my skin for very long. It is a cleaner. Uh, so let's go over anodizing a part and I'll show you how simple it is. Okay, so I just grabbed the uh, quick part that was sitting in the bin. This is a relentless frame. As you can see, it's just as machined. Um, still got to hit it on the disc sander, just get rid of a machine line down the middle there. But it's pretty shiny. And then the other side is just got a matte finish and some machine features. I actually, I don't even think I cleaned this, so it's probably going to be a little bit mottled. Uh, when it comes to the anodized surface finish just because typically you want to uh, you know try to keep it get it as clean as possible when you want a super clean finish but I just kind of want to give you guys a rundown on how this works so basically I like to put it on my titanium wire uh, dip it in the water wiggle it around a little bit before I turn the electricity on just to make sure that it's all wetted out because uh, sometimes they will just kind of be a little bit dry and they don't want to anodize fully so I've got that I usually will just dip my finger in the electrolyte and wet the bar just to make sure I have a really good connection and then right off the bat you want to make sure that your voltage is dropped so that when you turn it on it'll power up you'll hear those transformers humming and then there will be no voltage. So there will be no anodizing going on at all. Uh, from that point, you can go through, there's several uh, color charts that you can look for, but I, honestly, I found that they're not perfect, but they will get you close. Um, you know, so if you're looking for bronze, you know, 12 to you know 16-ish volts will get you kind of a bronze. Um, I will typically run a multimeter on my leads, uh, elect electronic multimeter, just a cheap multimeter, so that I can see exactly what the voltage is. So basically, it's just telling me that I got basically nothing coming through the voltage right now. And I'll just come over and let's just go up, you know, we'll say 10, 12 volts. And I will watch the multimeter. So there's roughly 12 volts and you can see it's already turned bronze. It's pretty quick. Kind of a goldish bronze. And you can tell because it had a little bit of oil on it, you get a little bit of like some purplish weirdness going on there. It's just some coolant that was left on it from machining. Uh, so safety first, obviously I've got power on right now. It's 12 volts. If you ever worked with a car or anything like that, 12 volts isn't really gonna do much to you, but I would highly recommend not uh, grabbing both leads. Uh, single hand picking up something like this is not gonna shock you. It's when you ground yourself that it's going to shock, some, shock yourself. So if you stick both hands in there, you're gonna get shocked. A single hand typically doesn't do much to you, if anything at all. Uh, so, but safety first, you know, typically if you're gonna stick your hand in the electrolyte, just turn the power off, especially when you get into the higher voltages because it hurts more. Uh, so there's 12 volts, eh, 12 and a half volts, whatever. Um, you can fine tune this. So I'll slowly turn this and you can kind of see that it just kind of cranks up like a tenth of a volt at a time, five tenths of a volt, 
you know, and you get basically, you get about two volts total out of the fine adjustment on this setup. And then I'm just gonna crank through the voltages so you can watch it turn colors and it's super fun. So I'm just slowly cranking through. And up, I'm up to 50 volts now. 55. And at this point, and the lighting is not the greatest. We got a bit of a green, but you can't really tell in the video. And you know, pumping out 75 volts there. And the higher you go, the more weird it gets in the voltage. Uh, you get a bit of a yellow here at like 80 and this is grade 5 titanium not 38 so if that gives you any indicator so you know here's 90 volts roughly you're getting into that kind of pinkish zone go there's a hundred and it's definitely getting more pink so at this point I'm not sticking my hand in there because that's a fairly high uh, voltage so I will turn that off now you don't immediately want to stick your hand in there um, there are some minor capacitance that has got to bleed off so you can still get shocked so you want to let that bleed for a second before you jam your hand in there um, keep in mind that when you are anodizing um, you are breaking the water molecules down so you are getting out uh, hydrogen out gassing on this so those little bubbles are hydrogen bubbles they are flammable um, it's typically not anything that I've ever been really concerned about it's never been enough to like cause a fire if there's a spark or anything but you know be aware so yeah and you can see now the some of the hydrogen bubbles are still sitting on there at one point I need to uh, test out a surfactant like some kind of soap and I wonder if that would help reduce the bubble sticking because I do notice it doesn't give as clean a finish sometimes if you've got a lot of bubbles. And here you can see on the back side it's much more iridescent when you get to that uh, color temperature, I guess you'd call it. Uh, yeah, so that's electrical anodizing and titanium. And also, something that I found super helpful is a photography light that I set up. And when I turn this on, it helps me set my color temperature so I can come in and change the color temperature and get it adjusted to where it gives me much more true color. So when I pull it out of the anodizer, I can make sure I'm actually hitting the color that I want compared to basically sunlight. The shop lighting is pretty harsh, so it doesn't always give me the greatest color rendition. So having a photography light up here that I can set the color temperature on and the brightness is pretty helpful. Well, hopefully that helps you guys out. Give you a little insight to Hoback Customs and Jacoback Knives. A little bit of how-to for you. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Make sure you subscribe and hit up our socials. Uh, Instagram, uh, X, all the social media, True Social, all that stuff. Hit us up and check out HobackCustoms.com and JacobackKnives.com. Thanks, guys. So one quick addition to the video that I wanted to point out is your primary surface finish, i.e. your sandblast, your tumble, your satin, your polished, your uh, belt finish as machined, whatever your base finish is on the part is going to directly affect what color you get and the whether that be the subtlety of the color or the boldness of the color. Uh, and it also can quite drastically affect the actual color you get. So, you know, at 100 volts on this frame as machined, you can see that the flat here, which is actually just a raw titanium finish come off the roller, um, is much more blue. And then the machined portion here, the very shiny portion, is kind of a purplish pink. Same with the machined chamfers and the profile. And then you can see here the sanded finish is a little bit more of a bronze. It's got some of that pink undertone to it. 
So keep that in mind when you are putting the voltage to the part, there's a lot of testing involved there. And you can see some of these uh, customs that we have sitting here. This is black anodizing and moving over here, if I can get my grubby fingerprints to not rub on them too badly. Um, you can see that this is a polished finish and it's very bluish purple, which was the color I was hitting at. Uh, you look at this, this is so, this voltage right here was like 24 volts or something like that. And it's polished. This is a bead blast, ceramic bead blast. That's the same voltage, same amount of time in the tank and everything, but you get like a deep purple. And forgive me, the lighting is not the most amazing in here. And then on the polished edges, it's a little bit more blue. It's more vibrant. So your finish on the part before you stick it in this tank is critical for the color that you're trying to achieve.